Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Mindy Beerline, and I'm just really excited to be presenting with you today. With um, the time being 11.58, we're just gonna get going here in about two minutes. We'll allow everybody a chance to get on and get situated, whether you're here in Zoom with me or on Facebook Live, but thank you so much. But I'm so excited. People are popping on. Hopefully this will be a really well attended um, webinar because we've got some great information to share. So um, thank you so much. It looks like Beverly and Debbie are here, Denise. Hi, Mary. Mary's like a wonderful gardener. She knows more about flowers than I do. So I'll talk about body mechanics and then Mary should have her own webinar about how to take care of flowers. That's for sure. But oh, hey, Rhoda, nice to see you. And so again, we're just going to wait here another minute or so, let people kind of log on and get situated. But very excited to have you all here. housekeeping. Um, as a reminder, if you're joining us on Zoom today, there is a question and answer box. And so if anything comes up, there will be a question and answer section at the end. And I'd be happy to address anything that I can over Zoom or Facebook Live. So be sure to submit anything that comes to mind as we go. But it looks like we're nearing though that 12 o'clock time slot. And so, Kate, do you think we're good to go? Looks good, Mindy, whenever you're ready. All right, very good. Well, like I said, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Again, my name is Dr. Mindy Beerline, and I'm with Renew Physical Therapy. And thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to present some wonderful information on how to enjoy gardening in a safe and pain-free manner. And as a reminder for those attending this webinar live, at the end of this presentation today, you will have the chance to win an ergonomic gardening stool. So be sure to stay with us and let's see who wins that at the end. So as we get started here though, here's just a little bit about myself. I'm the managing partner of Renew Physical Therapy at both the Frankmuth and Bridgeport locations. I'm a graduate from the University of Michigan Flint's Doctorate of Physical Therapy program, and that was back in 2010. So I've enjoyed practicing over the last 11 years now. And I currently live in Vassar with my husband, Matthew, and our three kids, Matthew, Madison, and Maddox. And they are eight, four, and six. And so life is a little busy. But one thing that Team Beerline really enjoys doing is having a hobby farm. And thus kind of brought us to this whole gardening webinar. Because with warmer weather, weather upon us, many of us are just itching to go outside. We want to get rid of those snow boots and snow shovels and really get out our gardening tools and watering cans. And for Team Beerline out in Vassar, we have a wonderful hobby farm. And so this truly is our busy time. We have a large garden with an attached greenhouse. We also have a section for raspberries and grapes, and the kids really enjoy pumpkins. But also, in my spare time, I'm a chicken farmer, so we have over 80 chickens. We've even hatched 20 babies recently, so I better update that to 100 chickens right now. And every once in a while, we'll do pigs too. But I really find having a hobby farm a great opportunity for the kids to get involved. They need to learn where our food comes from and how much work goes into harvesting that crop. 
but also the responsibility that they get from caring for everything around our farm is just wonderful. But with all of this hard work that has to be done, these very simple and enjoyable tasks in our garden can really lead to some muscle aches and joint pain too. So this can especially happen if we don't properly use body mechanics and follow general safety guidelines. So today, I'm really excited to present on how to do this in a really safe manner. So here are our objectives. First, we're gonna learn what to do even before you start gardening. Then we'll gain knowledge on some great stretches to perform, and these can be done prior to, as well as after, before you cool down for the evening. We'll review positions that can lead to pain or injury and how to avoid them, as well as how can physical therapy help if you run into an injury or pain. So before you even head out to your garden, you need to really focus on what to wear. So always remember, wear loose, comfortable clothing. This allows for movement and your body to breathe. You don't wanna feel restricted in your movements and you don't wanna get overheated. Next, comfortable shoes is very key and they have to have good arch support as these forces can trickle up the spine. I can't tell you how much we really find that decreasing your arch support can lead to back issues. So again, very, very important. And then finally, gardening gloves. Oops, I'm so sorry. Here, we'll get back to that slide. Gardening gloves can also assist in avoiding any hand injuries. Very often, sometimes we'll have a client with a bag or a tree or a shrub or sticks in their hand, and all of a sudden they slip and they go to grab those things. And if not wearing proper protection, again, that can often lead to injury, especially if mid-fall. Next, it's always important to warm up and stretch. So it's recommended that even before you get to gardening, you really should tack on at least 15 minutes at minimum to go through some stretching. This will get those large muscles moving, those small muscles moving before you really tax them in the garden. This can prevent residual soreness from the activity and then also prevent injury. And finally, before gardening, you also need to really prepare your tools. One tool that we often um, forget about is water. It'll be so important to take breaks throughout your time in the garden to rehydrate. Because remember, you're burning calories even when gardening, so you can count it as exercise. Gardening tools are also very, very helpful, and those need to be sharp and ready to go if needed. Also, a stool or bench can help with body mechanics, but we'll get more into that later. Next, I'd like to share some great stretches. Again, stretches should be performed both before and after gardening. Stretches, though, I want to make sure that you always remember to go slow and controlled and never, ever force a movement. Stretches should never be painful. So I like to often um, share with my patients to start from the head all the way down. This way you can't forget about a certain body movement. So as we go along with these next stretches, I'd invite you to try some of these even at home. That way, as I'm talking about them, you can see how your body responds. And then again, don't forget that Q&A button as we go along, because if you're running into something, I'd be happy to hopefully address that along the way. So again, we're going to start from the head on down. So even just doing neck circles. And again, never force some movement. You'll go one way and then go the other way. Okay, 
Arm circles are very important too. Oftentimes I'll start even just with my shoulders. So thinking going forward first, so rolling them forward, up and around. And then also go backwards. Now this one too, always think shoulders down and relaxed as much as you can. And again, never force the movement. You can do about 10 of those in each direction. Arm circles too are always really good. So again, always good to work both the front of the shoulder going forward as well as going backwards. Again, good, you know, 10 reps or so, that's pretty good. And finally, especially if you're going to do a lot of lifting or planting, um, shoveling or raking, these neck muscles right in through here, your upper trapezius can get tight throughout. So a gentle tilt to the side here. When you go the one way, you should feel the stretch along the opposite side. And again, never force it. So only go to where you feel a comfortable stretch. Again, with this static stretch, you'll hold for about 30 seconds. And then of course, don't forget the other side. Very good. So the next couple movements are more dynamic in nature. And dynamic stretches and movements are also very good to get our large muscle groups going. So as you can see from this, she's marching in place, bringing the arms up and so forth. High knee walking around the yard is also another great example of a dynamic stretch. And these, I can't tell you enough, they probably look silly, they feel silly, but in the end, your body will really thank you. Next, we'll move a little bit more in depth to the shoulders. Now, if you have a shoulder injury or soreness or a previous rotator cuff, Again, remember, only go to where your body is comfortable. So for those arm stretches, again, you'll reach across and gently hold here. And for this stretch, you should feel it comfortably pull right in through here. Again, once you get there though, hold and don't bounce or hug into it to avoid any injury. The other one, you'll reach up, and overhead as if you were gonna scratch your upper back there and you can support at the elbow, pulling it in towards your head there. Again, hold for about 30 seconds. And this one, you should feel right in here. Now this one too though, as you reach behind your head, just make sure your head is straight back and in line with your shoulder. Don't allow yourself to bring it forward too much. So hopefully those are all feeling good. Now we're gonna move down into the legs. And for those stretches, I always enjoy using um, the availability of the environment around us to really um, get at those muscles good. Um, it, those stretches are really easy to do here in the clinic because we have little boards and stretches and steps and so forth, but that's not always the case at home and especially in your garden. So as we go through this, I'll try and talk you through on how to modify as needed. So first is the calf stretch. As you can see, um, in my garden at home, I have some great raised garden beds. It's helpful for our plants and ergonomics, but it's a great way to get a stretch too. So simply place your toes up on that raised garden bed and then you'll drop the heel down. And you'll want to feel it right here along that calf muscle there. Now, the calf stretches, though, can also be done in a lunge position. And if you perform this in the lunge position, you'll feel it along the back leg. So I'm just going to back up here and we'll kind of angle it so that you can see this modification. But again, you'll get yourself into a little bit of a lunge position. And I'm going to feel the stretch along my back leg down here through that calf muscle. 
So keeping the back leg first straight, I'm just going to lean into it where I have a comfortable pull. You'll want to make sure though that your back toes are pointed in line with your front ones to get a good comfortable stretch. This gets the gastrocnemius muscle, but there are two muscle groups in our calf. And so also, if tolerated, you'll want to gently bend that knee slightly too. Now that gets the soleus muscle, and then that calf is fully addressed. As with any stretch though, just remember, hold for about 30 seconds, and once you find a comfortable pull, be sure to not bounce into it. All right. Then we go off to the hamstring stretch. This one is really important, especially if you've had any back pain or hip pain. And oftentimes we just forget to stretch. So as you can see, I get into a little bit of a squatting position, but always remember to keep the back nice and straight, as you can see here. And you'll want to hinge from your hips versus rounding at your back or slouching. The slouching position can really put unwanted forces along your back. Now, if this though either is bothersome or maybe troublesome for your balance, again, you can hold on to a piece of fence if able, but let me show you how you can also do it from a seated position. Again, I'm just going to back up here. So we can get this going. So from a seated position, you'll sit towards the front of your chair or stool. You're gonna want to extend the one leg out straight. And again, sitting up straight, just gently lean forward, hinging from your hips. Once you feel that comfortable pull, again, remain statically there, don't bounce into it and don't allow yourself to slouch because that's where injury will happen. But very good. Okay. And then last but not least is the hip flexor stretch. So let me get to that slide here. And this is inside my um, little greenhouse here. So as you can see, I'm just using, um, this area to hold on to for balance. But if you take one of those gardening pots and flip it over, it can be used as a great stretching tool as well. So simply put one foot up and you'll lean forward. You might feel a pull in your knee, but also on your standing hip too. So again, another great stretch, especially if you've got back and hip pain. Finally though, before you even go to your garden, take a few laps outside of your garden. Don't walk straight there. This can um, really be done as well at the end before you allow that body to cool down. Some gentle stretching and walking prior to landing on that couch is key because it's on the couch that all of those muscles will then tend to tighten up for the night. And this will help with any soreness you might have the very next day. So after that is all done, we can finally go into our garden. And these are some tips and tricks um, as we discuss some common positions for injury and pain. Using good technique to protect your body when you are out in your garden will be vital to avoiding injury. And in this next section, we'll talk about body mechanics of the back and the knees, but truly don't forget about that core as well. So first are static positions. Static positions or staying in the same position for too long can really lead to muscle fatigue and soreness. This is often felt if we're bending or kneeling for too long. And weight shifting can help with this, but let's talk um, more about individual positions a bit more. So our first one is kneeling. 
Overall, you usually can't get away from kneeling in the garden. This allows us to get to areas you might have a little bit more difficulty crouching down to, but we need to remember the position of the back as well as the knees are key to avoiding any muscle soreness. So while kneeling, don't forget about your core. Again, that's really your lower tummy and drawing it in and up towards your spine to engage the proper muscles. Engaging the core prior to that slight bending is necessary to kind of hold everything nice and stable versus being all loosey-goosey as you go to move and bend. So some key tips to avoiding injury in the kneeling position is to actually try to be on one knee, keeping the other planted on the ground. This is called tall kneeling. You also want to remember to switch every few minutes to help distribute that weight and avoid the muscle pain, as well as pain along the kneecap. Now, I'm not sure how many are joining us um, that might have a knee replacement, but um, that's always a common question that we get here in physical therapy. What do I do? So if you have a knee replacement, it's also very common that some surgeons actually don't want you to kneel on your knees as it can be quite painful if performed too long. So in this case, first and foremost, always check with your surgeon. But there are ways to compensate too, to get around that or to help us in certain certain situations. So you might want to use a kneeling pad or a gardening stool that will also help. So using these kneeling mats or knee pads and so forth, that helps reduce the load on the kneecap by creating a constant soft surface. It's also vital as you use this that you might have to adjust it along the way as you make progress in your garden. So you don't reach too far. For instance, we always want to make sure that you're working in the space in front of you. If by chance though, you're reaching way far over here, you'll notice how my back wants to bend and twist. This bending and twisting and reaching out of the space right in front of you can throw your alignment off further up through the hips and sacrum. So definitely something to take notice of as we're moving along in the garden. Another position is the weeding and planting. So that constant bending. Before even planting or weeding though, it's, a, it's really important to try and prepare the area as much as possible from a standing position. You can use lightweight, long handled tools and always remember work smarter and not harder. But if planting, try to plant from a kneeling position if able versus a squatting position to avoid pressure throughout the low back and knees. It's also very important to take rest breaks and do the opposite motion that you've been placed in. So I usually recommend if you're gardening, Every 10 to 15 minutes, go ahead and stop what you're doing and straighten up. Because again, that prolonged bending can really put us in some awkward and painful positions. So a great exercise, and again, I'll kind of back you up so that I can talk you through it, is a standing lumbar extension. I think we'll tilt a little bit more. And I'm going to show you from the side here, but if you place your hands on your hips so that your pelvis can remain nice and stable there and widen your base of support to help you with your balance, you're just going to real gently lean back and you'll notice I'm not going too far or letting those hips come forward, but just that little bit hold for about three to five seconds and then come back up. I usually recommend doing about 10 of those 
And then of course it's back to work. Now, one thing though about that exercise is that sometimes exercises are not for everybody. And so with that exercise, if you have spinal stenosis or spondylosis of the low back, that one might not be good for you. So always consult with your doctor or a physical therapist to help you out with that. On to lifting and carrying. So lifting heavier items such as bags of soil or planters can be really strenuous and hard on our bodies. And of course, if we lift improperly, this can also lead to injury, um, oftentimes of the neck and shoulders, but also into the low back and even sciatic pain with it going down your leg. So if possible, you always want to minimize the weight of what you're carrying. So another great thing would be to um, remove some of that soil into another pot before you move it. But then also don't forget about those tools that you got ready prior to gardening, like your wagon or your wheelbarrow or your nephew who's here to help. You know, make use of all of those great tools that you have available. But body mechanics are really, really key to any lifting and carrying. So some great pieces of advice are, number one, always lift with your legs. Be sure to bend your knees and stick your bottom out so that you can always maintain that natural curve of your low back. Always face the object as much as possible to avoid bending and twisting together like we had talked about, as that might tend to lead to alignment issues through the pelvis and sacrum. And then also remember though, when placing the item down, always make sure to step and point your toes to where your landing space is. Injury will often occur when your upper body and your hips actually go in opposite directions. So the more that you can think neutral spine, the better things will go. Some of this though also carries over to shoveling. Now with shoveling, be sure to always square up to your target, get nice and close to it. And then when reaching for the load, stick your bottom out and leverage with that shovel as much as you need by using your legs. Always think less is more. Lifting too large of a load will also lend to a slight bend or stooping of your low back and thus placing those unwanted forces there too. And then finally, don't forget to lunge. When throwing the soil, leaves, or other items, always point your lead foot in a quarter of a lunge movement toward the landing place. Again, making sure that your upper body and your hips always go in the same direction. And finally, some great tips here are work smarter and not harder. So hopefully this will be a great review for us. And gardening is really supposed to be fun and enjoyable and even relaxing to most of us. And so please don't let it be any backbreaking work. First and foremost, utilize the garden tools when able, wheelbarrows and wagons, ergonomic tools, especially those that are ergonomically friendly with good grips or long handles, ratchets and so forth. Always make sure to keep your body upright to give you more power while you can use less effort by using these things. We also need to remember to take breaks as needed to get out of those static positions and rehydrate. I often recommend you to take a good rest break every 20 to 30 minutes, especially if you're feeling stiff or cold or even extra warm out, you really need to remember to hydrate your body. Um, another great tool or tip here is to take extra trips rather than carrying the heavier items all in one um, load to avoid injury. 
And this next one too, it's a great new concept in the world of gardening, but that's the concept of vertical gardening. So this doesn't all only assist our plants, you know, talking about raised garden beds for um, just getting the water to drain properly or trellises to help new growth go upward, but also think about it in a way to save your knees and your hips and your back too. You're not going to have to bend as far forward or slouch and you can keep nice and upright and shoulders back. But finally too, if it hurts, you really need to stop. Your body will tell you what it needs at all times. And pain is something that we need to listen to and truly not, not ignore. Persistent pain or sharp pain is a sign that you need to take a longer break or stretch something out or rehydrate your body because muscles are cramping. Or maybe you need to get out of certain positions because there's just more going on. But if this pain lasts longer than 24 to 48 hours, therapy actually might be able to help. And of course, I'm a big proponent of physical therapy. So here in the physical therapy realm, we um, love to address those aches and pains and it can really get you quickly back into that garden. I always say, the faster we can get our hands on something, the faster we can get your hands back on what you wanna be doing. So here in our office, we often use manual therapy. So these are hands-on techniques to assist with tight muscles, maybe a massage, some joint mobilization to get more mobility through a particular joint or even address those alignment issues. We also use quite a bit of exercise. These can gain us both strength and mobility. So a lot of those stretches that I talked about are key to performing even in the clinic as well. But I can't stress enough too that everyone is so different. So if you are seeking treatment, just know that your treatment will be tailored to your specific needs and your specific goals. Here at Renew Physical Therapy, we love just one-on-one -on -one care and really tailoring our treatments to what you want to get back into. And if that's gardening, let's do it. But if you're unsure, if physical therapy can help, I want you to be sure to reach out to any of our locations. Here at Renew Physical Therapy, we offer free complimentary pain screenings at any of our 16 locations. So just to give you a quick picture of those 16 locations, we're in the Great Lakes Bay region and our northest one is up in Tawas. They've joined us. And then of course the Frank Muth and Bridgeport locations are the furthest south, but there's so much to go around as far as Saginaw and Bay City and so forth. So I'm gonna then let Kate kind of click over. We're really excited to give away a garden mealer. And of course this will help Hopefully one of you just um, be able to more so modify those activities and help avoid any injury. So thank you so much to everybody who has joined us today. Good luck. Thank you, Mindy. You're welcome. Um, yeah, we wanna send one of our live attendees, one of these garden kneelers. It's really great because you can sit on it as a stool as is shown there, or you can flip it over and it's a kneeler with handles as well. So I've got all of our attendees in my little name picker online, random name picker. Our winner is Rhonda Volker. Very so, good. Yeah, congratulations, Rhonda. So keep an eye on your email, Rhonda. I'll be emailing you to get your address so we can send that over to you, okay? Um, and then I think we, we do have a couple of questions, Mindy, if you're ready for that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Yeah, and if anybody has a last minute question, go ahead and click the Q&A button and we'll try to get to those too. Um, the first one is from an attendee who has hip pain and they asked if it's better to kneel or to sit on a garden step stool um, oh, for hip pain. Yeah, very good. So if 
having to choose between the two, I would say sit on the garden stool. That will alleviate forces through the knees and the hips. Of course, though, it can be a challenge to get up. So if that garden stool can have some handles and so forth to help you with that, that is great. So I would choose to sit on the garden stool first. Excellent. Um, and then somebody else had a question about um, wear and tear on their hands from digging and snipping and weeding and wondered if you had any tips for hand wear. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So, of course, it's really important to protect our hands. And so that's where those garden gloves and using the ergonomic tools with um, some good grippies and so forth. But the other one, we can strengthen our hands and we can stretch them out. So I'll kind of walk you through a few hand ones. So first, even just to strengthen, you can get yourself like a grippy ball and so forth, but then also work on really pinching through each finger through that gripper. And I'm sorry, I don't have one, but just imagine, you know, a stress ball even and really just gripping through. And then also some great stretches for your hands and your forearms is a prayer stretch. So if you make a prayer hand and then open up at the elbows, you should feel this stretch right along here, which really good for that carpal tunnel and so forth. And then of course you can reverse it. If it's painful on one versus the other, you can stretch them at different moments too. So again, you'll extend the arm out, bring the hand up, and you can give some light over pressure with your other hand here. When the fingers come up though, again, hold it statically, you know, 15 to 30 seconds or so. And this way you'll feel it right along here, but then also reverse it. So fingers down, gently hug it to you. And then of course you'll feel it along the top there. So hopefully these will help. Perfect Great question. Um, we did just have somebody submit a question about where they can find that garden kneeler that Rhonda's gonna get. And oh, yeah. I'll drop that in the chat right now. So if you see a chat button on your screen, if you click that, um, that'll take you to the Amazon link. And we will also be sending a follow-up email to everybody who attended today. It'll have Mindy's contact information if you have a question. Um, it'll have a couple of her top three takeaways from today. And then I'll include a link to the kneeler there as well. Very good, great question. Cause yeah, that looks really ergonomically friendly. I got one for my dad and he loves it. So I hope Rhonda loves it and anybody else who gets one. But other than that, I think that's it for questions, but thank you so much, Mindy. Very good, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it and I hope you did as well. So thank you so much. Thanks Mindy, bye everybody. Bye, have a great day.